Right now, you can see an AI playing the most infamous Mario Kart track of all time, Rainbow Road. Back in 2008, the developers behind this iconic game likely anticipated the love-hate relationship that millions of players would develop with this notorious course. However, I doubt they would have expected what we're doing today. But not this guy. This one got quite confused. But this AI, who's almost an entire lap ahead of the other racers, is going to be the focus of this video. But this is the end of trading. We need to go back to the birth of this little AI, where its humble beginnings are truly on show. Just hours after being created, it's having quite a struggle. But unlike the oxygen thieves from my old school, this AI has a bright future ahead of it. Two years back, I did a similar video with an AI on Rainbow Road, but today's adventure takes things to a whole new level by unleashing enemy CPUs and the unpredictable chaos of items into the mix. Armed with only four available actions and relying solely on raw screen pixels to navigate the game's twists and turns. First up, we need to turn the racetrack into an environment, like a playground of sorts, where every sequence of actions is a mini drama of triumphs and oopsies. Now, to make this metal head a speed demon, I've rigged a checkpoint fiesta on the track. There will be a total of 100 checkpoints per lap, and each time our AI high fives one, it gets a digital cookie or a plus one reward. Thankfully for me though, I didn't have to plant these checkpoints myself. The game already has a nice GPS-like system, so we're piggybacking on that to automatically place the checkpoints. Sounds good, right? Well, almost. These checkpoints are more haphazardly placed than furniture in a cat cafe during an earthquake. But hey, it's not all confetti and cupcakes. When our AI does something dumb, we've got to be the strict coach. In previous videos, I just watched the speedometer. Too slow for too long, and it means the AI probably went through a wall. But when we throw in the chaos of flying shells and banana pills, that method goes out the window. It's hardly fair to send the AI to the dunce corner just because it got walloped by a blue shell. So I've become a bit of a digital spy, snooping on the Wii's memory to catch when our racer gets thwacked. Now, when the AI takes a hit, it gets a brief period of immunity. Only when it's genuinely messing up do we hit the reset button. Technicalities aside, and we're now 15 hours deep into our AI's training regime, and it's no longer just chugging along, but rather actually starting to look pretty decent, just mere moments from nailing a complete lap. If you've noticed the AI's value predictions for its actions, you may have noticed it's got a particular fondness for the final stretch of the track. The reason? There's a massive cluster of checkpoints down there, which is effectively the high of a lifetime for our AI. As you may remember from the start of this video with our backwards driving friend, this wasn't my first attempt at crafting this AI. One of the primary hurdles I had to leap over involved preventing the AI from taking its little nostalgic detours. Rainbow Road has a particularly thorny section right after the two big rings. This tricky section left our AI stumped, opting to sidestep the risk of plummeting off the track. Fortunately for me, the game's memory holds a gem that aids in this quandary, a directional indicator, the thing that normally helps the game decide when our friend Lakitu needs to make an appearance, usually because one of your slightly slower family members has started driving backwards. So to curb the AI's instincts, I implemented a strategic reset paired with a hefty penalty, dissuading the notion of reversing course. I even went as far as to make the penalty for backtracking harsher than the consequences of a crash, since I'd much rather witness the AI daringly attempt and fail than cowardly backtrack upon itself. To go even further to tackle the challenge posed by this track's notorious section, I introduced one more strategic maneuver, spawning the AI at multiple points along the track, rather than confining it solely to the starting line. Continuously starting from the same point tends to grant the AI excessive exposure to that section, robbing it of the opportunities to master other segments. This discrepancy becomes pronounced when entering particularly demanding portions of the track that receive insufficient attention from the AI. By enabling the AI to spawn right before these challenging sections, it gained invaluable extra practice precisely where it needed it most. Once I established the game's interface with the AI, the next puzzle was determining the optimal AI model for the task at hand. Evaluating AI is much harder than it looks though. It often demands extensive time and compute power, sometimes taking days of training to reveal its true capabilities. Thankfully, equipped with two computers, I devised a simple yet effective method. I set up two different AI models to tackle the exact same problem on each machine, allowing a direct comparison of their performance. 
After letting both AIs run uninterrupted for a total of 60 hours, the results were in. The footage you've been witnessing so far naturally hails from the superior performer. However, before unveiling the final iteration of the Adept AI, let's briefly peek at the progress achieved by the inferior version within the same 60 hour timeframe. The key distinction between these two AIs lies in the architecture of their neural networks. The underperforming AI relied on a convolutional neural network, a common choice for tasks involving image-based inputs. However, these networks often struggle when expanded with numerous layers, limiting their capacity for complexity. In contrast, the superior AI also employed a convolutional neural network, but leveraged a distinct type known as a residual network. This specialized architecture facilitates connections between earlier and later layers of the network, enabling the addition of more layers without encountering as many hindrances. Following extensive runs of both networks, the verdict was crystal clear. The residual network emerged as the optimal choice. It surpassed the regular convolutional network in terms of both runtime efficiency and the total number of games it successfully played, solidifying its superior performance. Anyway, I know what you've all been waiting for, so put your likes and subscribes together for the very final version of the Victorious AI, after a total of 60 hours of training. By the end of training, this AI was absolutely smoking the enemy CPUs, finishing nearly an entire lap ahead every single time. I think the only times the AI wasn't finishing the race was when some really unfortunate stuff happened, like getting hit by a POW on a really crucial corner where it just couldn't stop or getting hit by lightning when it was trying to jump over a gap. You know, things we can all relate to. What's even crazier though is that as you saw from the graph, this AI was still improving even after 60 hours of non-stop training. As much as I relish the idea of letting it evolve further, I couldn't resist looking to create newer and better AIs for future videos. While witnessing the AI triumph over in-game CPUs is impressive, my excitement peaks at the thought of time trials. In my previous ventures into time trials, I harbored doubts about the AI's ability to rival a human expert's time. Yet, armed with some newfound techniques, I'm eager to put my AI to the ultimate test. The prospect of unleashing these new tricks and watching the AI chase after an expert level time is a challenge I'm itching to take on. But anyway, for now, be sure to enjoy our final AI absolutely obliterating its inferior counterpart. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope this video made your day just a little bit better. I'll be sure to see you in the next one.